Hello everyone. Welcome to part 10 of our beginner's guide for Windows Server Active Directory. And uh, today we are going to discuss on the ways in which we can configure a Windows Server. So let's look at say in how many ways we can configure a Windows Server. So a Windows Server means a Windows Server operating system. So there are only two ways in which we can configure a Windows Server, namely as a domain controller and as a non-domain controller. So these are the only two ways in which we can configure a Windows Server as a domain controller and as a non-domain controller. So let's see what exactly we mean by a domain controller and as a non-domain controller. So what is a domain controller? Again, any computer on which Active Directory database is present can be called as a domain controller or any computer on which Active Directory domain services are installed and configured can be called as a domain controller. So let's check an example over here, Berlin DC and Boston DC. We have two computers and we have installed and configured Active Directory domain services on these two servers. So these two servers are called as domain controllers. And in our uh, say infrastructure, we have lot of other servers as well. Let's say we have database servers, we have web servers, mail servers, file servers, we have update servers, DHCP, Hyper-V, DNS, VPN, and we have some application servers as well. Let's say some monitoring application is installed on some servers, let's say SCOM or some deployment application like SCCM, so on and so forth. But these servers are not called as domain controllers. They are either member servers or standalone servers. So there is a very clear distinction between a domain controller and say a non-domain controller. So let's discuss the domain controller and a non-domain controller. So we are going to discuss the ways in which we can configure a Windows Server. So broadly speaking, we can configure a Windows Server as a domain controller and as a non-domain controller. So let us understand in how many ways we can configure a Windows Server as a domain controller. So the first option is save the first domain controller in a new forest. And the next option can be a new domain controller in an existing domain. It's also called as an additional domain controller. So the third option can be a new domain controller for a new domain in an existing forest. That's called as a domain tree. And last option is the new domain controller for a child domain in an existing forest. So in our earlier sessions, we have covered what is a domain, what is a forest and what is a tree. So let us understand in how many ways we can configure a Windows Server as a non-domain controller. So we can configure a Windows Server as a non-domain controller as a standalone server. It's a member of a workgroup network and we can configure a Windows Server as a member server, means member of an Active Directory domain. So let us dive into each and every option now. So let us understand how can we configure a Windows Server as our first domain controller in our new forest altogether. So this is the first step in building our Active Directory forest. Now we install and configure Active Directory domain services for the first time and the server becomes the first domain controller in the domain. And we build a new forest and a forest root domain. So the forest is identified by the name of the forest root domain. 
So, when we configure the first domain controller in a new forest, we install Active Directory domain services and while configuring it, the, there will be a time when it will ask us what exactly we want to do. So, we will select this option, add a new forest and we have to provide the forest say root domain name. In this example over here, we have provided the name contoso.com. So, let's take an example over here. This is a server name DC1 and while configuring we selected the option add a new forest it asks us for the domain name we provided contoso.com and we installed active directory on the server and we created a new forest with a new domain so this domain controller is the first domain controller in a new forest altogether so this is the this is one of the options of configuring a server as a domain controller. So, let us look at the second option that is a new domain controller in an existing domain. So, it is new domain controller in an existing domain. So, uh, now we have an active directory forest and a domain named contoso.com and our target is to configure a new domain controller in an existing domain. So, we need to add a new domain controller in the contoso.com domain. So, let us see. So, while installing and configuring Active Directory, we will select this option, add a new domain controller to an existing domain. So, we have to provide the domain name in which this server will be configured as a domain controller. So, now we have our contoso.com domain and we also have one domain controller. Now, we have a server named DC2. So, we installed and configured Active Directory and this domain controller now is our say new domain controller in an existing domain and this domain controller is also called as an additional domain controller. So, now we have say more than one domain controllers in contoso.com domain. So, if you want to add a third one, you need to follow the same steps. Just select the option add a new domain controller to an existing domain. So, there will be a third domain controller in contoso.com domain. Now, let us look at the third option new domain controller for a new domain in an existing forest. So, we are going to create a domain tree over here. So, now we have an active directory forest named contoso.com and our target is to configure a new domain in an active directory forest. And for this new domain, we require a domain controller. So, while configuring active directory, we will select add a new domain to an existing forest and we will select the domain type as tree domain and we need to provide the forest name and the new domain name. Here in this example, our forest name is contoso.com and our new domain name is east.contoso.com. So, it is somewhat like this. We have our active directory forest and a domain, so a single domain inside it, contoso.com. Now, we need to, our target is to create a new domain in an existing forest. So, we have one server. Now, we installed Active Directory on DC4 and we configured it and while configuration, we selected the option, say new domain in an existing forest and we created east.contoso.com as a new domain in an existing forest and this will be our new domain controller in a new domain in an existing forest. So, DC4 is our new domain controller in a new domain in an existing forest named contoso.com. Contoso.com is our forest. So, let us look at the last option how to configure the ways in which we can configure a server as a domain controller that is new domain controller for a new child domain in an existing forest. So, we have an active directory forest now named contoso.com 
Now our target is to configure a child domain to contoso.com domain. Now for this new child domain we require a domain controller. So contoso.com will be our parent domain and uh, west.contoso.com will be our child domain. So we will be configuring west.contoso.com as a new domain but that will be a child to contoso.com and contoso.com will be the parent domain for west.contoso.com. So here we will select add a new domain to an existing forest. So while configuring Active Directory, we will select the second option, add a new domain to an existing forest and the select domain type would be child domain and we need to provide the parent domain name and that is contoso.com in this example and new domain name would be west.contoso.com. So it would be somewhat like this. So we have contoso.com domain and uh, we need to configure a new domain called say named west.contoso.com. So we installed Active Directory and while configuring we select a child domain and we installed and configured Active Directory on DC5 and this, this west.contoso.com was configured as a child domain for contoso.com. So contoso.com is a parent domain and west.contoso.com is the child domain. So this domain controller DC5 is new domain controller in a new domain in an existing forest but it's for the child domain. So these are the four options in which we can configure a Windows Server as a domain controller. Now let's look at Windows operating system network models. So typically there are two network models for Windows operating system, a workgroup model and a domain model. Now in our next say next part we are going to understand in detail both the models in detail the workgroup model and a domain model. So we'll understand the difference between a domain network and a workgroup network in detail in our next session. So Windows operating system has two network models a workgroup model and a domain model. So this is you make uh, say you must uh, know this thing any Windows computer either is a part of a workgroup network or a domain network full stop we don't have any third option. So any Windows computer either is a part of a workgroup network or a domain network it's somewhat like this member of either a workgroup network or a domain network. So this particular computer name desktop-24 is the member of a workgroup network name workgroup. So any just remember one thing any Windows computer either is a part of a workgroup network or a domain network we don't have any third option. So let us look at what a standalone server is or what a member of a workgroup is all about. So whenever a Windows Server is not a member of an Active Directory domain, by default, it's a member of a workgroup environment. So such servers who are a part of a workgroup in environment are called as standalone servers. So again, this desktop can be called as a standalone server, standalone say workstation, whatever. So this is how it is. It's not at all a part of our domain, contoso.com. It's outside the domain and the forest. It's part of a workgroup environment. So it's nothing to do with our contoso.com active directory. It's not the part of the active directory. So let us look at member server or member of an active directory domain. So whenever we join a Windows server as a member of Active Directory domain that server is called as a member server or it's called as a member of an Active Directory domain. So 
this is how it is. So, this particular server name DHCP hyphen server is a member of Contoso.com domain. So, the full name of the server is DHCP server dot Contoso.com. So, let us say we have we need to add or we need to join the Windows computers as a member of Active Directory domain. So, whenever we install Windows by default, it is the member of a work group environment and as an administrators, we need to join the computers or Windows say uh, client computers or servers as the member of our Active Directory domain. So, let us summarize what we have say covered in today's session. We have seen the ways in which we can configure Windows Server. There are two ways as a domain controller and as a non-domain controller. So, there are four ways in which we can configure a Windows Server as a domain controller. That is the first domain controller in a new forest, new domain controller in an existing domain. It is also called as an additional domain controller new domain controller for a new domain in an existing forest that is called as domain tree and new domain controller for a new child domain in an existing forest it is called a child domain and as a non domain controller we can configure a windows server either as a member server or as a standalone server means is a member server means a member of an active directory domain or standalone server means it is not the part of active directory it is the part of work group network so this was end of part 10 hope you have enjoyed today's session and thank you again for joining today's session if you think this channel is helping you to learn anything new please subscribe and share this channel with your technical community and have a great day